Did you know that 89% of software engineering hires fail? And not because of technical incompetence, but because of something the entire industry overlooks. Here's the reality. Startups don't just need coders. As I built my seven-figure consulting business, I hired dozens of engineers. Some became the backbone of the company, and others simply didn't last. Over time, I've identified the key traits that separate the great hires from the ones who slow the team down. So what exactly separates these two groups? In this video, I'll break down the three non-technical qualities that guarantee success in a startup environment. So trust me, these are the traits that your next hire or you as a candidate yourself must master. I want you to imagine this. You're on a small boat in the middle of the ocean. Suddenly, the engine dies. There's no mechanic, no manual, and no way for you to call for help. So what do you do? Well, some people panic, others freeze, waiting for somebody else to rescue them. But a very rare few will rip apart the engine, use whatever they can find on board, and figure out a way to get it running again. Now, replace that same boat with your startup. Your team faces a challenge that has no guide, no stack overflow answers, and no roadmap. Each passing second raises the stakes. What happens next? Now, of course, that's a hypothetical scenario, but here's a more realistic version of you that actually happened in my own startup. So we were building a product on a very old system and we needed to move the data to a newer, faster platform. And at first, I mean, it sounded easy, but we quickly realized that there was no public API, nor any out of the box tool available to automate the process. And our only option seemed to be manually copying thousands of data points, which would take at least a week. And for a startup, a week is an eternity. We didn't have the time to waste and we needed a solution, fast. The team was stuck. Some suggested brute forcing it manually and others kept searching for a tool that didn't really exist. Then one of my engineers, someone who's now part of our C-suite, had a very different idea. Instead of wrestling with the problem internally, they decided to reach out directly to the data company. And at first, there were roadblocks. The company's support team wasn't very responsive, their documentation didn't mention a single thing about a private API, and a bunch of other stuff. But my engineer didn't give up. They found a contact on LinkedIn, explained our use case, and built a report with one of the company's engineers. After a few back and forth emails, he got access to a private API endpoint designed for internal migrations. But of course, that was just step one. With the access secured, the real work now began. Over the next few days, they wrote a custom script to connect to the API, handle the authentication, and transfer the data securely. But as with anything, it didn't go without any problems. They ran into rate limits, missing fields, and they needed to double check the data integrity at the very end. But finally, after what could have been a week-long bottleneck at the bare minimum, the data migration was completed in less than two days. And that moment, taught me the true value of resourcefulness. It wasn't just about coding skills, it was about thinking creatively, taking initiative, and solving the problem in a way that nobody else had considered. And having that kind of an engineer saved me time, money, but most importantly, momentum. And that is resourcefulness, the ability to navigate the unknown and solve problems with whatever you have. It's the single most important trait that I look for in startup hires. And one of the ways I do that is when interviewing, I ask open-ended questions like, tell me about a time you faced a problem that you've never seen before. How did you approach it? Or I might give them an impossible take-home challenge to see the type of solutions that they might come up with. And the best candidates show that they can take ownership and thrive in uncertainty. But don't get me wrong, while resourcefulness is crucial, nobody can succeed alone. And that's where the next trait comes in. Let me tell you a little bit about a symphony orchestra if you don't know. Every musician is usually an expert at their instrument. But what happens if they all play without a conductor? Well, no matter how skilled they are, the music will sound chaotic. And the same exact thing happens in a team of engineers. Even the most talented developers can create chaos. For example, we once had an engineer deliver a very highly complex feature that could have been pretty much a game changer. But they forgot one important thing, to tell anyone how to integrate it. They were sick and they left behind no instructions, no documentations, no user guides. To make matters worse, they hadn't documented anything on the back end of things either. And myself and a few others had to spend hours 
piecing everything together to actually figure out how it works. On the other hand, I had an engineer who maybe wasn't the fastest coder, but they always kept the team aligned. And I remember one of their best moments came during a project that we had with a roofing company. The roofing company was struggling with inefficient ad spend on their marketing. And our engineer developed a system that pretty much aggregated ad data from multiple platforms, analyzed it using machine learning, and recommended reallocations of the budget to boost ROI. But the real brilliance wasn't in building the system, it was actually ensuring its success. You see the very same engineer documented every single step, walked the clients through the process, and even created test campaigns to demonstrate the actual results. So case in point, communication is the glue that holds teams together. It's not just about speaking well as well. I mean, it's about aligning with the team, documenting your work, and raising red flags before they become roadblocks. So when hiring, that's the second trait I look for, communication. I ask candidates to explain a complex project as if I know nothing about it. And the ones who shine can break things down simply and clearly. Now, for those of you who are developers, you need to practice this skill. Communication is a complete game changer. And another thing that I like doing when interviewing is I like to keep track of what the people do after the interview. Do they send me an email summarizing everything that we talked about? Or at least even to simply thank me for my time. So with resourcefulness and communication, we now have a strong foundation for a team. But there's one more trait that separates good engineers from great ones. And that, in my opinion, is the hardest to find. I want you to imagine an athlete training for the Olympics. They've mastered their sport, but every single day, their coach points out tiny flaws and pushes them to improve. Now, the athletes who listen and adapt go on to win gold medals, but the ones who resist, they end up plateauing. And the same exact thing happens in engineering. No matter how skilled you are, if you cannot take feedback, your growth will stall. I once hired an engineer who had an amazing resume, picture perfect, as you might say. But whenever we gave them feedback, they got extremely defensive. Their work didn't improve and eventually they had to leave. And contrast that with another hire who actively sought feedback. They took notes, asked questions, and applied what they learned immediately after we gave them feedback. And in less than a year, that very same person became a tech lead and started mentoring others how to do the same as he did. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is coachability. The ability to learn, adapt, and grow. And that's what sets top performers apart. So for those of you who are founders, you need to ask candidates how they've used feedback to improve in the past. And for the developers watching this, highlight moments where feedback actually helped you level up. This shows that you have the mindset to actually grow and also can help the team grow too. And it wasn't too long ago, just three years ago, that I thought technical skills were all that mattered. But now I know resourcefulness, communication, and coachability are what truly drive success in a business. So if you're a founder, you need to hire better and look for these three traits in your hires. And if you're a developer, you need to master these traits because they will set you apart from the pack. And if you're ready to learn how to build a high-performing team and scale your business, you need to watch this video next. I'll share the exact framework that I used to grow my consulting company to seven figures and achieve massive results. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one.